The following day, the boys are on the road again. And whilst they won't be rubbing shoulders with the landed gentry today, the aim is the same, to find the best pieces they possibly can. They're heading 250 miles back up north to Liverpool, where Drew's lined up a visit to one of... ...full, innit? It is. Pilgrim's Progress. Gonna meet Selwyn. It's been there now for well over 30 years. I've been there dozens of times. Never really introduced myself to Selwyn. We always do well in Liverpool. Always do well in Liverpool. That's always good gear comes out of there. Anyway, yeah, looking forward to it. The city of Liverpool dominated global trade in the 19th century, when ships full of the finest goods from all over the world would arrive in its famous docks. The city's industrial past is still evident, but much of Liverpool's centre is being modernised. One place that has stubbornly resisted change is Pilgrim's Progress, an antique business housed in a converted 19th century cotton merchants. There are three floors of antiques here for Drew to rummage through, and it's all owned by dealer and expert furniture restorer Selwyn Hyams. I've been working here in Pilgrim's Progress since we established it in 1984. As the years have gone on, I had quite a large number of staff at one point. As I'm reaching retirement, which will never actually happen, but certainly slowing down. Hopefully they'll find a, a piece or two and we'll come to an amenable arrangement. Hello. Selwyn. Hiya. 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 How are you? Good, good. Good. Thanks for How having us. Doing? That's OK. Pleasure. Right, OK. We'll come to have a look at some, some of your kit. But Please I believe you're more it. restoration sort of these days. Much more than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. But I still enjoy it. When I stop enjoying it, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here to have a look at what you've got. Liverpool was one of the greatest places in the world to buy antiques. Yeah. It wasn't just, I'm not just saying it. No, because it was a port. It port's. really was. I mean, it's just all the best gear. Well, we had the right housing stock. The Georgian Quarter here we is amazing. We had the Georgian Quarter and also a very large Victorian housing stock. Today we are at Pilgrim's Progress, right in the centre of Liverpool. This is a place I've come to for... God, the first time I stepped through the door of here will be sometime in the late 1980s. Green behind the ears, didn't know what was going on, desperately wanting to be an antique dealer, not having a clue, just starting the process, really. Um, so it's nice to be back. Should we see if we can buy something? Please do. Great, so I'll have a look around. Follow around. This is good. Stuff like that. Is that available? I promised it to somebody, and they're good customers. OK. So I don't mind taking stuff that needs, you know, restoration. I'm not bothered about whatever. What's that? Uh, is that this the, came out the top the, of something? It came out of the same place. Beautifully made, weighs an absolute ton. All brass, front Wow, all it's not interiors. just wire either. No, no, it's absolutely soft. Have you got the rest of it? No. Just that? Just this. Even even the frontage is brass. What a thing. Wow. What are you doing with that, then? Is that available? That is available. Made in England in around 1850, this is no ordinary shop display cabinet. It's a rare and special find due to the sheer quality of the workmanship and the materials used to make it. The cabinet itself is made from several different types of timber. Maple, elm, burr oak and mahogany. The screen is made of cast bronze and the shelves lined with crushed velvet. It's in need of some light restoration, but once completed, could be worth around £700. Sold. Great. I love it. Thank you very much. It's cracking, that, Selwyn. Great. Love that. It's nice to know where it's come from as well. It'll help it along. But to have that made today, I think you'd be on the thick end, all those fittings. I think you'd be looking at about five grand. I was going to say three or four, yeah. But I might be a bit cheaper, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Standards unbelievable. That's that thing about Liverpool. They had the best stuff. They have the right houses. Mm. Beautiful. I love it. Good one. Worth coming just for that. It's good to talk about it, actually. I it's mean just that. a belter. It's really nice. Belting thing. Somebody who appreciates things like Absolutely up. beautiful. What a thing. That's like a Rolls Royce of shop fittings. I think what the best thing you could do with it is bolt it to a wall and use it for display and possibly put some lighting in the back of it as well. It's just such a damn good thing. I don't really care what I do with it. I'm just really glad that I own it. Cool. Right, let's go and have a look downstairs. Right, OK. Oh, it's nice and light down here. All right. So, all sorts of everything. 
all sorts of everything. I like that picture frame. House clearance. Must be a family. Must be a fam. Must be a family. So that's the father, and these are the kids. And there's a very good mirrored picture frame. Really heavily distressed uh, mirror plate. And I'm looking at it, thinking, well, I really like it. And then Selwyn goes, "It's a tenner." So we'll buy it. Can I pull that chair out? The slipper nice. chair. chair. Yeah. For those who like that style. I love the aesthetic it's real. movements. I love it. I love it. Um, what are the little... So a cast off. The, there's a button off one side. Yeah, and there's the, the button is here for that one. All right, OK. That's easy enough to sort out. I just like anything that's pure. So, like, pure arts and crafts, pure Georgian, pure aesthetic, you know, whatever it's... Whatever it... Mannerist, whatever it has to be. Well, how, how, how do you describe purity? You get a lot of stuff, particularly with the aesthetic movement, that, that was watered into arts and crafts on Nouveau. OK. So you get yes. a bit of that and a bit yeah. of that, and you think it's not quite pure. Well, that's pure. That's aesthetic, and it can't be anything else. It's got nothing else going on there. Great. OK, so... And that's it. This slipper chair is a good example of a rather eccentric period called the aesthetic movement. Around the mid-1800s, artists and designers took offence to the trend of mass production started by the Industrial Revolution and wanted to produce truly one-off pieces. This chair has been handcrafted from ebonised wood and, as the name suggests, it was designed to be low to the ground to make it easier to put on your slippers. It does need some work, but could be worth around £600. How much is it? 140 How much? 140 Okay. You're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, really? 120. 135. Drew and T are just a stone's throw from Liverpool Docks, which was the gateway to the UK for global trade in the early 19th century. I haven't been here in a very long time. The first time I came here was well over two decades ago. There at a three-storey antique warehouse, where Drew has fallen. One three five, sold. Okay. When we get it back, we're going to take off that red cover and then just expose it down to the Hessian, but retaining that beautiful shape that the upholsterer has created there. Somebody will want it. I certainly do. Got to have it, especially one hundred and thirty-five quid. Why not? There's money to be made. I like it. One strip down is going to look fantastic in the shop. Ah. Dentist stool. Is this for sale? Yeah, that can be for sale. These are great because you can do that on them so you can pull people's teeth out. You shouldn't really be pulling people's teeth out, but. No, no. I'll do it. I don't mind. If the I money's think I right. I could pull somebody's teeth out. Sterling operating stock, serial number, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The Amalgamated Dental Company. Cool. One thing I haven't seen in a while is one of these little. Dentist stools, really well made things these are, but pretty much just for dentistry because you sit on it and you know when your dentist is moving backwards and forwards like that, you know, and moving around, they're sat down, aren't they? They're not stood up doing it. So they're sat down and this stool allows them to move around because unusually you've got the base like that. It does, um, I like them. They sell well. They're a bit of fun. They're actually very, very good quality. This dentist stool was made in England in the 1950s and features a chrome base with black leather seat. The simple but effective design enabled dentists to lean at up to 45 degrees in all directions, making their job easier as they treated their patients. A fashionable retro piece that could work in a variety of settings today, it could be worth around £250. Yeah, it's cool. Look at that, eh? Still got the moves. <laughs> Scream if you want to go fast. <laughs> so how much is that, then? 45. Sold. Thank you very much. 45 quid, give it a clean, it's worth about... 80 to 100 pound more in the right place. There's a door casing here that I yep. like the look of. Yeah, that. Yeah. That there. Date-wise, looking at the door casing itself, I mean, it's, it's a very wide door, so it's... It's a little bit over over standard, so it could it's probably early nineteenth century. Looking at it, so eighteen thirties, and it just would have been the whole house would have been done or whatever it came. Out. Missing a bit of this, that, and the other here. It's fine. In the early nineteenth century, 
the wealthiest in society with the grandest houses, wanted beauty not just in art, but in the architecture of their homes. This pine door casing would have been used around an internal door and is typical of the Georgian Gothic style. It has quatrefoil details in the top corners, neat symmetrical four-petal flowers, and running down the sides, it has carved cluster columns. It would add a sense of grandeur to any doorway and could be worth around 300 pounds. What can you do that for? It's got 95 on it. Yeah. 85. Yes. We'll take that. Great. I like that. Great. Nice. My background is in sort of architectural antiques, so it's got a lot going on. Cluster columns and a trefoil. Got to have it. It's a cracking thing. If you're building a doorway in your house, in your restaurant, or you want to make a bookcase or whatever, this is the sort of little detail that you need. I love architectural antiques. I absolutely get all of that age, all of that style, and all of that purity of design. It's always really good to meet old dealers who are still passionate about the job. Selwyn could sell this place in a heartbeat and turn it into one of the trendy flats that now flank it completely. You can't get out of this business once you get into it. It sticks to you like glue. What was that wonderful saying a mate of mine said? He says, the antique business is like Hotel California. You can check out, but you can never leave. And it very much is that. A couple of standout buys today. The aesthetic movement slipper chair, that stripped down and cleaned up properly is going to look great. But the standout piece is clearly that top of that cabinet. For 250 quid, I bought something wonderful. And that proves the adage, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to be fabulous. Most enjoyable, actually, if I may say so, surprisingly so. And it's really enjoyable to have somebody who's interested in what I'm interested in and also is quite knowledgeable. And it made it fun. It made it interesting rather than just a commercial job. What a nice man. Very nice man. And you learn stuff, you see. Yeah. You learn stuff. Happy. Happy got some good things. That cabinet, though. Very wow. nice. Wow. That was mind-blowing. The person that stood there and ordered that would have been an incredibly wealthy person in the 19th century. And somewhere out there, there's more of it. Yeah, there will be. As they're so close to home, the boys have made a pit stop in Conway to drop off their haul and get it ready for the shop. And it's the 1950s dentist stall that has piqued Rebecca's interest. I love this industrial stool. And because of this maker's mark, I've been able to discover some really interesting historical facts. The Amalgamated Dental Company Limited actually dates right back to 1820, where it was originally known as the Claudius Ash and Sons Limited. Claudius Ash was actually a skilled London jeweler who accidentally diversified into the field of dentistry because the local dentist asked him to supply gold teeth. Now, Claudius hated working with human teeth, but he saw an opportunity to develop a huge variety of dental equipment. Sadly, Claudius died in 1854, but the company continued to prosper, and after a few mergers and a name change, it became the world's largest manufacturer and distributor of dental equipment. So who would have known that it's all thanks to Claudius Ash, a jeweler, who had an aversion to human teeth.
cabinet itself is made from several different types of timber. Maple, elm, burr oak and mahogany. The screen is made of cast bronze and the shelves lined with crushed velvet. It's in need of some light restoration, but once completed, could be worth around £700. Sold. Great. I'll have it. Thank you very much. It's cracking, that, Selwyn. Great. Love that. It's nice to know where it's come from as well. It'll help it along. But to have that made today, I think you'd be on the thick end, all those fittings. I think you'd be looking at about five grand. I was going to say three or four, yeah. But I might be a bit cheaper than you. <laughs> <laughs> Standards unbelievable. That's that thing about Liverpool. They had the best stuff. They have the right houses. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. Good one. Worth coming just for that. It's good to talk about it actually. I it's mean just that. a belter. It's really nice. Belting thing. As somebody who appreciates things. I Absolutely think beautiful. What a thing. That's like a Rolls Royce of shop fittings. I think what the best thing you could do with it is bolt it to a wall and use it for display and possibly put some lighting in the back of it as well. It's just such a damn good thing. I don't really care what I do with it. I'm just really glad that I own it. Cool, right, let's go and have a look downstairs. Right, OK, oh, it's nice and light down here. All right. So, all sorts of everything. All sorts of everything. I like that picture frame. House clearance. Must be a family. Must be a, fa must be a family. So that's the father and these are the kids. And there's a very good mirrored picture frame, really heavily distressed uh, mirror plate. And I'm looking at it thinking, well, I really like it. And then 